tuned for vegan, gluten-free, sugar-free, antioxidant-packed acorn jellies. We've been having some great weather in Greece, so I am making acorn flour constantly, and I need to go out and check that before I do anything in the kitchen. If you're not interested in riding across the farm with me to check my acorn, then you can hop ahead to the number you see on the screen and we'll start the quick cooking demo. For those of you who are staying, we're just passing by the guest house on my right hand side and we're moving into the olive grove. I'm testing a gimbal to see if I can get some smooth video on my bicycle, but it doesn't seem to be working out the way I had hoped. I'm going to have to look and see what are other options there are. This tank is where all the water is kept that we recycle from my cookie kitchen, from the guest house and from my home. We have a biological sewage system that works with yeast and takes all of the water that's used indoors and makes it possible to use that water once again in the gardens. Every day that I'm making flour I need to come out here and shake the screens and it usually takes two or three days in this whether to dry these chips out enough to be ready for milling. At nighttime, the screens are covered. playing with acorn jellies after learning about the Korean dish dotirimu, I hope I'm saying that correctly, which is basically acorn starch or what I call acorn flour and water simmered and it forms a jelly and this is eaten as a savory dish and on top of salads in Korea. I tried it, I liked it and I thought well why not go in other directions as well and make it, uh, it could be a sweet. The first recipe we're going to do is found in my book, Eating Acorns. It's a good introduction to what to expect when you mix acorn flour with liquids and you simmer it. It becomes gelatinous. Unlike wheat flour, which turns into a paste if you mix it with liquid and simmer it, acorn flour expands and becomes gelatinous. And you can then mold it and put it in the fridge. I'm going to be using this pan so you can see what's actually happening as the acorn simmers. It's possible to make acorn jellies with all kinds of different liquids. You can use milk, you can use alternative milks like almond, oat, coconut, or as I'm going to be doing today, you can use juice. We begin with half a cup of acorn flour. You'll probably notice from my other cooking demos that I'm pretty relaxed about my measurements, but when it comes to measuring powders, you definitely have to compact them in, in the cup so you get the right amount. And then I'm using a fabulous pomegranate juice that is made here locally on the island. And I'm going to use two cups of that. So the ratio here is one part acorn flour to four parts liquid which is pretty much the norm when you're making acorn jellies, no matter what liquid you're using. And then the third ingredient, and final, is uh, honey that is made here on Kea, about half a cup. I'm using a lot more honey in this one because the juice is very, very tart. Just 
just three ingredients. Egg corn flour, pomegranate juice, and honey. We're gonna simmer this for a minute or two. Until the flour and the honey are completely melted. I want to make sure you get rid of all the lumps. Any pockets of dry flour in there. And don't forget to scrape the sides. Little chunks can be hiding in there. Okay, so I think I'm going to add some currants to this. Not too many, but just give it a little bit of texture. And some pine nuts. A tablespoon or two. Oh. You can put anything in there you want. Nuts, dried pieces of fruit, acorn chips. The acorn oils are released. You can really, really get that strong aroma of acorn that I love so much. So there's, there's, it's absolutely not grainy now. The acorn has completely melted. The acorn flour has completely melted. And now we're just waiting for this to thicken, which can take about five or six minutes. You don't want to let it stick to the bottom. Turn my heat down a little bit so I don't burn it. You can see if I stop stirring for a second, it starts bubbling like lava. And that's a sign it's done. And now, it over here. And we're going to pour it into these adorable molds with acorns that I have here. Make sure you get currants and pine nuts or whatever it is you've put in yours. Make sure you get some in each, in each little jelly. Oh, these are going to be delish. The tartness of the cayenne pomegranates with the cayenne honey and cayenne acorn flour. Wow. I would say you can't get more local than that. Obviously, you're not all going to have acorn pans, but um, any little jelly dish will do. Any little dish. You could put them, you could put this in the bottom of a jar like this. Okay, so these are going in the fridge to cool down for some hours. Mmm, it's delicious. Tangy. Mmm. morning. These have had an entire day in the refrigerator and now we can just slip them out of the mold. Take them out carefully one at a time. Oh, 
how wonderful those look. If you're having trouble getting them out, the pan can also be set into a tray of hot water and that loosens them up. So that's it. Thanks for being here. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have in the comments. And um, until next time, keep eating acorns. <laughs>